Hello there, minions of technology. My name is Tim Lee. Welcome into Legacy Studio, the music side of my studio, uh, where today I want to check out the new Korg. Well, it's new to me. The Korg uh, Collection 3. Okay, you pay monthly for it, but you pay it for, I think it's like 24 months. Uh, I've had it for a little while, but I haven't really had the chance to dig into it yet. And I'm going, I want to make more music content, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and tell my computer to record its screen here. Let's go ahead and get right down to it. Plugins here as we go in. Let's check under VSTs first uh, since I haven't looked for it. Here we are, ARP Odyssey or ARP Odyssey. Let's see if all the other ones are here. Um, M1, MDE-X, Mini Korg. Uh, there's one specific one that I've wanted to look at here, and that's the Korg Triton Extreme. So please apologize. Please, I apologize in advance for immediately moving into this one. But the Korg Triton Extreme, when I saw this board as a kid, I would go and I would spend an hour uh, in a music store just playing this Korg Triton Extreme, waiting for the opportunity to own one myself. Um, and and I think at that time it was like three thousand dollars, and I'm like, I will never have a use for it. But I wanted one incredibly badly. So to see it here in this this form. Just got me all giddy. So I'm curious if it'll do the things that the old uh, Korg Triton Extreme used to do, but also the sound quality. I loved the sound quality of the Korg Triton Extreme. Very cool. Let me go ahead and go into my settings here on my um, system. Turn off a couple things so that we can hear the true sound. Uh, this defaults to some settings that I like to have. Oh, there we go. Turn it up here on our system a little. There we go. Now we can hear it in... One of the sounds that I loved with all my heart, it had the best um, uh, bagpipe sound ever. And I do mean ever. I I could not stand how much I loved that bagpipe sound. So if I can find that and play it and hear it the way I used to hear it when I was a kid, that would be amazing. I'm not sure where to look for it, though. Uh, if I can find this, that would be really, really impressive. The other thing that I really liked about the Korg Triton Extreme especially is the fact that it actually had a really gorgeous... Um, it, it had a beats in the background and it did chords and things like that. And you could put your melodies on top of it. It was kind, it was made specifically for being on stage. Uh, so to, I, I loved that about it. It made me sound good. Here's a piccolo. Ooh, English horn. Well, we can do a search. Let's try a search. Bagpipe. Oh, look at this. Okay, uh, the sound that I was hoping for out of the bagpipes is not the sound that I remember as a kid. And I remember it was program or combination where it really had that feel. So let me check under combination here and see if I can find a bagpipe sound uh, with with that uh, in mind. Uh, nope, it's not even coming up. So I would have to look through, but let's see if it's even the same thing that I remember. Yeah, see? loved this thing when I was a kid. That was it right there. That that feeling, that sound. Uh, this is what taught me about, um, uh, not percussion, but um, what taught me about synthesi synthesizers. <laughs> Just all the stuff that inspired me as a kid. That was it right there. Um, because this had everything built into it. It was creating all that feeling and, and movement that I loved. Uh, and that I had no idea how to do. Now as an adult, I'm, I've learned a lot more and I appreciate it a lot more, but yeah. Learning that arpeggios are so important to music and, and, and finding that sonic sound. And 
Oh yeah. Let's check. Let's check some of these other ones. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, and I couldn't get over how much I love these sounds. Let's see the other. Remember that one too. Oh yes, yes, my childhood returns. And and these are so many beautiful sounds that would be perfect for my music. And the thing that um, the thing that I think about with some of this stuff. Oh yeah. And I mean, yes, all of this was made for performance. It wasn't made to add to your music per se, but that was what inspired me. Listen to those strings. I mean, no, it's not its not the strings that I have now that I absolutely love um, from uh, Spitfire, but it is still great strings. And I know that there's so many other keyboards here. Maybe we'll make a couple different episodes of this, but I am kind of on the hunt specifically. Oh my gosh, Phil Collins, bring it on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is worth 16 bucks a month to me, that's for sure. Yep, I remember this one. And I spent, I spent forever just going through these uh, and just listening to them. I'm just trying to see if I recognize any of them that could possibly be the one that I thought had the... The bagpipes. That might have been it. That sounds really good. I mean, it's not exact bagpipes. It's obviously synthesized, but it's good. Yeah. I, yeah, that might have been it. That might have been it. That might have been it. And the thing I've learned more recently, because I did have the Arturia uh, five-piece collection kit or whatever. That was like 25 bucks a month, and I just never used any of the uh, old keyboards from that. Um, and I was just digging through the other day, and I, I found that Korg series for 10 bucks cheaper, and it had the Extreme in it, which made my mind just go... Give me it. Just $15 a month as an adult, to have this now or 16, however much it is, in comparison to being a kid not having $3,000 to have a keyboard in front of you, I have all the same sounds right here on my computer that I can use in my music now at the age of 34. That's cool. That's how far technology has come. Uh, and the keyboard back then was amazing. I mean, yes, I have the uh, the Push 2, and I have my Arturia Mini Lab Mark II here, which are great boards. It's not quite the same thing as having a... Um, 49 key uh, Korg Triton Extreme, but uh, yeah, this this is something I've always wanted uh, to own, and I, I'm owning a piece of that now, which is so cool. I remember this one. And and even even down to the point where I did the the lime wire thing when I was younger, and I tried to find uh, MIDI instruments like this. Uh, and Triton is right here. Let's take a look at Triton. That was the original Triton. And I thought, ooh ooh ooh, maybe that's maybe that's the Korg Triton Extreme. And I tried the Triton sounds, and I couldn't find what I was looking for. What I remembered about the Triton Extreme. Yeah, see, this is this is the original Triton. It still has some beautiful sounds, but. Like I said, still that synthesizer, still that um, arpeggiated feeling. And I'm learning now as an adult that, uh, you know, things that I, the, the push 
the push two has really opened up my eyes uh, because I've programmed it now with some filters and things that I can put in here uh, with my uh, Tim's push rack that I've built. Um, and it has things like reverbs, delays, frequencies. So I can take a sound that I might not like at first, and then I can alter it and turn it into something even more beautiful, which as a musician uh, who plays real pianos, real guitars and things, I don't think about the synthesis of, of changing these sounds. Now that I've gotten the push to, and I've kind of experienced that firsthand, and it's right in front of me where I can mess with that more, uh, this has become a much more uh, fun and viable solution for me that I actually appreciate more. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, if we go to the Triton and I pop in the Tim's push rack in here so I can get to it on my uh, on on my push two. See what other sounds we got. Let me also turn this all back here. I love it. I love it. I did. This is excellent. And I, I've messed with it with other. I, I haven't messed with this. I've messed with some other music I've worked on, but I haven't had the chance to open these up yet and really experience them. I would have loved that even. Love it. Just to have my flanger up here. So you get all your. Let's see if we can change up that bass a little. Nice, nice, very nice. I, I, I'm very much into it. Very much into it. It'll be fun to include this in some new stuff. Let's see what the uh, combinator has. Sounds great. There it is. What made the Tritons so incredible was the the behind the scenes melodics and things like that that they put in. You guys may disagree with me, but that's what I loved about them as a kid as I was growing up to appreciate them. Oh. That is so cool. That is so cool. Great, great memories as a kid coming back, just sitting in uh, Sam Flax. No, not Sam Flax. That's the art store. Sam Ash Music Store um, in, in Orlando, Florida. The MS-20 is pretty popular. Let's go take a look at that really quick. Also the Mini Korg. But uh, let's take a look at this. Oh, look at that. See, and I thought it would be really cool to own an MS-20, a real one. The problem with that is... Um, it's it's much more challenging to get your hands on. So once again, here it is, right here in all of its glory. Yes, it's not analog, true analog, but I can do all the same stuff on there, right here. I wish it was more param. The the benefit of having a real one is you can turn those knobs, and and having that all here on the push too um, has been an incredible feature. Now these, if it's built into uh, Ableton, it's going to automatically program into the push too, which I love. 
Um, if it's not automatically in Ableton, if it's not an Ableton type thing, then unfortunately, no, you're going to have to either program it in yourself, program it into something else like the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II, or you're going to have to just do it by clicking on here and moving things around. So let's see what happens here. Oh, 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 was that my fault? Do I still have something turned on? Okay, I do have something turned on here, but that's the whole point. Let's see what some of the programmings are. Lead, base. Let's see what their bases are. Acid base. Analog. that sound. Remember that sound very well. Ooh, sequencer. Let's see what this got. I don't like to program stuff. I like to change it a little, but if I can use pre-selections, I admit I do. Yeah, this is where I would like the real thing, you know? That way you can mess around with these knobs, not have to click them on them weirdly. But it is here. I know I'm at 20 minutes, but let's look at one more keyboard. Um, there's the FX, there's a the Monopoly. Monopoly is very popular. I want to see what the mini Korg is, though. Let's take a look at the mini Korg. We'll wrap up with the mini Korg. And then if you have any questions, ask them. I don't know <laughs> much. I just know that this is very exciting to be able to enjoy these and and come at this with a new perspective on how I can change these around. Let's see what we got. Crazy. See, they got the right idea. They got they got the stuff I would prefer here. Wow, trippy. velocity sensitive. Oh, I love it.
啊。So cool, man. Let's see what this. Let me turn off arpeggiator. Oh, that was, that was a preset. Okay. Let's try some changes through the uh, through the push. My friends that's gonna do it that's gonna do it i mean there's still so many more of these to explore the arp odyssey uh we got the the m1 the md uh there's a couple other ones here so we'll do a secondary video looking through a couple other ones here i'm gonna go grab some pizza by the way my name is tim lee now having to do my very best to remember to add that i do production music here on youtube as dj dorka because everyone in my YouTube unanimously, almost unanimously voted that I should be DJ Dorka. And if you know anything about this channel, you'll maybe understand why that is. But in any case, folks, thank you so very much for joining me here. I hope that you've enjoyed messing around in the Korg Collection with me. Uh, the uh, Korg Collection 3, great bunch of sounds, bringing back my childhood. I'm looking forward to digging in more and seeing what else is in here. So God bless you. Keep it crispy. First Tim 412. We'll see you next time right here on Legacy Studio. Bye.